Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. This episode we are doing something that I haven't seen a lot of and I thought would be really helpful is we're going to walk you through a really basic home rebuild of a 727 Torque Flight 3-speed automatic transmission. Like we normally do, we're going to be together with our friend Jim Hannon. Now Jim spent a good portion of his career working for Chrysler rebuilding torque flights. We're going to be using all fresh gear from our friends at TCI Automotive. This is our Saturday night special torque converter. This is our pan. We have our kit to throw to change the valve body to upgrade the valve body and then our standard rebuild kit and a whole bunch of fluid like way more fluid than we'll ever need. We've got their new steels and clutches. We even got their Saturday night special torque converter, which bumps up the stall around five to 800 RPM over the stock stall. Really nothing crazy, but it will be enough to help us get this Fury to finally do a burnout for goodness sakes. So this transmission actually is a pretty low mileage transmission. We're pretty lucky. The fluid looks really good. And we checked out the torque converter. And so far, everything looks from the outside really good. We had spent a couple days with some degreaser and knocking off all the mud and all the scaling that was on it. We passed it over with the wire wheel, as you can see. Really tried to knock off some of the ugliness now mind you we need to go through with a wire brush and go through the tighter spots and knock all this stuff off we're not making a beauty queen by any means but it's nice to get all this aluminum scaling off because again this this is corrosion that's how aluminum rusts so you get this really chalky scaling that builds up right now we're going to try to disassemble some of the little stuff we're going to take the cooling lines off take the torque converter out grab all the hardware that's still on it we're going to get the speedometer gear out and just take some basic stuff off. It's still full of fluid, so it is gonna be a little messy, but again, that's one of the downsides of building your own transmission, is you're just gonna make a mess. So, you think the easiest way is me bear hugging it? Dump it out. Okay, well you mind holding the pan I'll and know. I'll wrestle it. Okay, here we go. Alright. Alright, move the pan. You don't get much. No? Well, then. Yeah, a couple of doors. Uh, you got a little running in it. Alright. For a low mileage, 34,000 mile transmission. 34,000? Somewhere in that area. Yeah. That's really low mileage. Yeah. Taking the filter off now, and Jim is exposing the valve body, and we're just going to give a quick overview of everything that we got so far. It's like watching one of them. And that's a that's a seven that's a seven, that's a seven sixteenths all the way around. Yeah. Okay. And they torque down to 72 inch pounds. Okay. Thereabouts. Catch that? 72 <laughs> inch pounds. That's your torque spec. That's a big number on these transmissions. It, well, everything's aluminum. You're... <laughs> yep. yeah, you go, uh, you know, thrill a gorilla and start really torquing down, you're going to have a bad day. Yep. Pull that out. There it went. It went. Okay. What was hanging us up? The parking pole. There's parking a little, pole. Okay. There's a little trap door it pops through. Okay. And the little tongue, the little piece will sit in the cog. And that's okay. What we'll park. Okay. Just so you guys are seeing this, Jim's taking out the band tensioner. That puts preload on the band, and that band controls what gears? That's second gear. This is second gear. Yep. This one is reverse and low. Reverse and first. Yeah. This, this was this. The one inside is all your forward gears. Right. This one here would be reverse driving. 
Yeah, reverse and reverse in third gear. Okay. Because you drive this one and hold this one and it makes reverse. Okay. You drive this one, they all go forward and you lock them together. It's third gear. We're one to one. Good. The there's one. A tension strut. Yeah. Your tension strut. I I've have seen a... those bend in half. You got all that power and you hammer a gear. Oh yeah. When this guy hang, hangs on, you want it to stop that that drum right now. Right. So, yeah. If you got all that tension on there, of course you usually you probably had you get rid of that spring and you put a rod in here to keep the piston from moving. Right. You want it to be level. It? So that just hammers all the pressure immediately. Gotcha. So this guy's not moving on that accumulator. I always leave the accumulator spring out whenever I do one. So good resistance on the vans. Yep. Feels like they're supposed to feel. All right. One front pump. Now, is there anything to observe on that? Just. Well, there's. you could take this off and look in it and make sure there's no okay ugly spots in the, in the gears so now we're going to look at the drums we're going to pull everything out that's pretty good well, hand that fluid up in the clutches in a while <laughs> they're just dry looking all right what's our band that looks good really no discoloration okay i like the ones that are more vented than these little holes okay. that have the slots cut in them because that they apply quicker okay you don't have it floating. This would be the front clutch. All right. There's a little dark in there, but I won't know the little part. It should just come apart. It's just got a little light wave spring in it. Okay. Yeah, they're not. You're not going to muscle it. No. That one I'll have to press down. Okay. Yeah, we've Four got some, clutches we've and got some heat in this one. Okay, all right. You flip it over and now you got a new side. Uh, oh, okay. That's how you do that. But okay, we, we are burned right there. A little bit. It's not. It's not as bad as it could be. All okay. your steels are burnt. Of course, you get them anyway. Well, we got new steels. Yeah. Okay. So, so important one. Four are. clutches and five steels. Yep. Okay. And this isn't in terrible shape. We might take a little emery and ease on it, but you don't want to do too much. Okay. Anyway. All right. That would be the front clutch. The fun part is getting under it. Okay. It's a wavy looking ring. And it's thin. Okay. Okay, I'll just set that with that. This got a spacer in it. Usually that spacer never does live. Oh, really? <laughs> I've rarely put them back in, but it's okay. here, so I'll reuse it. Inner and outer seals. So you just pulled the piston out mm -hmm. and Got lip seals in it. Okay. And usually when you test the lip seal, you stretch it and you see how long it takes to go back, which these are really not in terrible shape. Okay. It doesn't go completely back, so I mean they're old. Right. And then you got one inside too. I usually leave them in until I'm ready to use them. That way you don't. So this is all factory equipment. This has never yeah, been a part. It's pretty much a yeah. Timepiece. Yep. <laughs> oh, somebody's already left some springs out. They build them the way I do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so this came out that way, I guess. It's, I, usually I'll put in one and leave out two. I, I, it makes the piston jump out quicker now. Like whoever, like this guy, uh -huh. wanted it to have a little bit better feel in third gear. That's what this does. It just takes less effort for that piston to pop the clutch on. Yeah, this would be second or this well you hold this one in second right you drive this one in reverse and third gear okay so these would be effectively our third gear clutches right. then. this is high gear okay in reverse so we're looking at same amount of clutches and seals or different count well, there's one one two three there's four of each in here four of each okay and the thrust plate looks good like I said, anytime you have some discoloration, this one's not bad. You can always use the other side. All right. And they are selective. I'm spinning it this way, using the clutch to turn uh -huh. the sun. It goes that way, but if you spin it this way, it goes the other way. That would be first gear. All right. And then you hold this for a second, it goes a little faster, and then that makes it one-to-one. -one. Okay. That's, that's your power flow. This one I don't think has it does have a little strut down in there. I see it now. Couldn't remember. 
And we'll look at his thrust washer. Got a little wear, but it's not terrible. Okay. I'll probably just let her run. That good. Right there. Pinions are smooth. Oh, yeah. Okay. That all looks good. Come here. Go into your little tabby hole there. That's the sun. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, these both right here are in just super, super good shape. There's not a whole lot of thrust there if you don't do. No. Like you're not pulling a trailer and all that kind of jazz. Okay. Oh, that, it that came was apart. Spread, huh? Yeah, it came apart. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it don't. There, oh down. yeah. You just got to restack it. Put it oh. together. I'm trying to get the first gear band out. We call it low reverse. Low reverse? Low reverse band. Okay. Yeah, when you have it in low drive, mm -hmm. the band is a fly bit ineffective because this is holding. Okay. And when you pull it in first gear, the band comes on and that's what rips this out. It tries to spin it the wrong right. way. So you neutral drop it. That's what you're doing. You're hurting stuff. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not the best of practices. <laughs> All right, so we got it vertical. You got everything gutted out of it. You're taking the cone out, and we're taking the sh output shaft, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just got to motivate it. 1080p. So what's our next step here? Is just clean the hell out of it? get it all cleaned out good, yeah. Okay, because we're not changing any of these. Now, I could take this pin... Right here, that is your pin for this, and there is an O-ring, yep. and it may leak out of there, so be aware that that might be your issue. You know, get a better shot of that. Here you go, right there. Okay. Yeah, that one's never been pushed out, but it, it, you take it from this side, and you just, right. it'll put, it'll move. So. All right, so what's our next step here? We well, want to just hose it down? It's going to need to get clean good. That's the okay. biggest thing. Should we take it out back or and shoot it with degreaser? and you Just give it a good going up. paper gasket that runs the whole perimeter <laughs> that uh you know paper gaskets typically don't last very especially they don't survive being pulled nope. but you also have this o-ring that needs to pop out we'll get a little screwdriver and pry that out so we're kind of skipping rebuilding the pump just because how clean our transmission looked yeah, I just need I just need that damn car to do a burnout. That's right now my standards are real low. Every one of those servos has the inside ones have lip seals and it'll have hard ring seals on the outside. Fit those all in your kit. So that's cool. Okay. Kit. A ring. Yep. There. I have exercised the demons. Don't lose the metal ring. Don't lose the metal ring. Okay. Very much overlooked. A lot of people don't do that one. And the one at the top of the valve body here where the kick down linkage comes through the shaft there, you gotta drop it out and there's a seal in there too. Okay. All right, so we're changing out the changing out the snap rings or lock rings. Well see these are seal rings. They okay. Look just like a piston um seal in an engine. <laughs> No, 
this I'm going in with this drum. Oh, okay. We can stack the whole gear train right now and then okay. do the clutches last. Okay. Just get my angle right on this band here. This is fine with that, but it'll just be out of the way. It goes one way, not the other. That's what we want. Ta da! Okay. That rings like a bell. Yep. Kind of gets it off of the table. How many seal rings are on that? There's two. There's two seal rings? Okay. Yeah. One of them is interlocking. And the, the other one isn't. I'm, I don't remember. I'll have to see what they give us in the kit. Whether it's going to go back that way. These have like a little lock on Okay. Them. Yep. Yeah. And both of these are going to be interlocking. So okay. Maybe oh, okay. this tab might have broke off this one. Which it... Oh, that ain't it. Somewhere in its uh, short life. In its lifetime, yeah. It's like putting a compression ring on a piston. Except this one has a, a total seal lock. <laughs> these rings here will seal on this. Ah, it went. Hot diggity. Woo! Oh man, it was good stuff. You can't get the pin all the way out. You just take it out a little bit. Oh. There you go. Yep. Hey, I guess that is that one. Okay, cool. I was wondering what that one fit. I was like, I can't remember where you go. There it is. I can do it out of car. I mean, I can do it another way. Hey, I bought these snap ring pliers for the sole purpose of setting that snap ring way back down. <laughs> now that it's... Okay. All right. We're gonna soak these. Yep. All right. One, two, three, four. We got five here, and one, two, three. We got five and five, and I don't know that we had five. I think we're two. Yeah, we're then we have four. Four, four of the smooth. Big thing is just get get oil in them good. All that's going to do is just get into the paper. All right. Let's see what the heck they gave for. So it's going to change all of our spring rates. It's going to give us, you know, different patterns to yep. change the actual valve body. This kit contains all parts necessary to obtain three levels of performance depending on intended use. Yep. Heavy duty, street, and competition. Yep. I'm not interested in competition. We do like the street. It smells like Dextron. I didn't taste it. I'm not that guy. Finally, and you know it's done right when you can pull up and that means you have it good. Moves freely. Took a few minutes, but yeah, you know, it just really didn't want to go. It's just a chore. Like that. And you got this plastic thing. And then your wavy string. All this is doing is kind of a shock absorber, this snap ring. It was fun to get out, I remember. Mm. Fun, not like a theme park fun, but. Why won't you go? This went nice. Come on. There's our pressure plate, and then you got a reaction plate at the top. So these pieces will change out. This guy, I think, we will flip over. That will be the best thing for it. Put it in upside when we get the clutches in it. So right now we're just literally changing out all the 
seals and all the yep. rings. All the rubber pieces parts, yep. yep. Again, lip goes down toward the pressure. So if it came out this way, the pressure's coming up, you want the lip to be toward the pressure. Or your day will go badly when you go to go. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll need to pick. This one's easy to get rolled if you don't watch what you're doing. It's got to, you got to roll it in the place. <laughs> as long as it's in the, in the groove straight, everything will be all right. Feels good. all down in here to keep the fluid kind of still buy this very same piece now. That's a good one done. All right. See if we can get all five in this one too. what you want to hear a double clunk yeah, that's a clunk band in there and then it doesn't matter which way it goes actually should probably have done it there it is Ta -da. Okay. yeah that's good well you don't think that's a totally scientific sanitary way of holding the transmission up absolutely <laughs> why would it be anything? why would this not pass osha i don't know why yeah, i know right <laughs> Come on, you're almost there, you little bugger. There you are. Threw in easier than it Yeah, it did. This one actually has a seal inside I'll have to take out too.
Yep. Pressure's coming out here. You want it to expand the seal out. So just like that. And clean that little fella out. I don't know. The, the only thing that this does here is hold the spring in. And if I don't have to change that spring, which will look, I'll mm -hmm. have to. That guy's finished. Now we got all our servos done. Yeah, went right in. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> disappear no and the uh, bermuda triangle of <laughs> garages here yeah that seal i always ignore they go together the outer and the inner one these i call them a leakage seal because they all leak oh boy that's just what are we doing here? We are recreating the top of the shining. The shining. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a brain, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that is effectively the brain of our transmission. And now we're doing brain surgery. <laughs> Just a little. All right. So See all the check done. balls. All right. Whole bunch in there. You got another one in here. they came out that's how i usually do it all right <laughs> this side up no way all it's doing we're going to drill out that little piece right there and opens up a circuit shift valve governor plug. All right, let's show them. The new one looks just the slightest bit different. And what this valve does, this allows you to pull first gear at any speed. Okay. <laughs> Rather than, it won't give it to you over 20. This will allow you to rip it back there and just do what you want to do and you know blow the engine up or whatever. <laughs> you know, hey, fun stuff. That's encouraging. deburr that before we put it all together all right so here's the question how many extra parts are we going to have when we're done <laughs> <laughs> i i'm going to plead the fifth on that <laughs> <laughs> This is your neutral start and reverse okay. contact. That's what turns the lights on. That is? Yeah. Okay. The one will allow it to start in park or neutral and this pops out and it makes reverse on that first detent. That's your reverse part. That's what that switch does. Okay. <laughs> Little known and less cared about facts, right? Funny. <laughs> so that's it? It's done, yeah. That's it for the throttle body. Well, I got I to gotta adjust the throttle pressure, sorry. Okay. Doing 72 inch pound? Yeah. And I'm gonna back it off two and a half turns. Mine I leave a little tighter than that, but this ain't mine. <laughs> oh. I take mine back about two. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if some of y'all out there ain't gonna like that. That's just the way I do them. I make them a little tight. I'm guessing that's what they wanted them to be over the servo shaft. That's gonna keep this. Oh, okay. It takes the cushion out of this. Oh. Okay. I can I can dig it. Gotta love tiny, tiny, tiny little snap rings. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> really? It was that easy. You just saw me fight with you. It just popped right on, huh? 
Install special rear servo spring supplied. That's that guy, because that's what came out. <laughs> right. <laughs> in? Yep. Yep. Okay, it's in. It's in. Yep. Now, with the same deal, we take this down, 72 inch pounds. That's 72 inch pounds. And then I'll use this guy to take us back. Three and a quarter, really? 904. Two and a half. Okay. Just make sure it doesn't turn, which it's not. Oh, I'm trying to turn just a tiny bit there. Gotta go slow with it. That's usually how I check them before I tear them down. I pull the levers and just see what the band adjustments are. That's good. Just is not as easy. Well, or can I? There you go. And that Paul just slides right in. Yeah, there's a little, a little spring loaded call. deal. Yeah. And you just gotta spin it till it drops in the cog and then it'll slip right by it. Okay. A lot of things I don't torque stuff on for something transmissions is I think I always torque them down. It's in park. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there you go. Ta da! Went in a lot easier than uh, coming out. Oh, God. Yeah, it's going to cooperate way better than what we were working with on the other side. Oh, yeah, that came out nice. Yeah, that's something. Hadn't done it in a long time, so I figured, hey, let somebody else. Right. And that is how you rebuild a 727 Torque Flight in your garage. Yeah. Using a basic rebuild kit and uh, a TCI shifter kit. Yep. Okay. And went through and did a pretty good rebuild. That'll be good for Marsha. And until then, I'm Kevin Shaw, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and maybe share it with your friends. Help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, why don't you check us out at www.moparconnectionmagazine where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you.